Good morning, and uh, we're going to share this morning about how to pronounce the Creator's name. And uh, even though I've taught on this before, and uh, it's good just to go back and just redo it a another way, and just to help people along the way to understand that there is a correct way of pronouncing the Creator's name. There's been a lot of confusion uh, caused by, uh, you know, the enemy, enemy uh, Satan. To, to, to disguise the name of our Creator, to hide the name of the Creator. Uh, to, there's been a lot of lies told that there's no way for us to know how to pronounce the name, which doesn't make sense at all because the Creator declared that we're to uh, proclaim His name, we're to call upon His name, we're to glorify His name, we're to uh, uh, sing unto His name, we're to love His name, we're to praise His name. I mean, I could go on and on and on. And if you didn't know how to pronounce it, then how, how could you do all these things that he has commanded us to do regarding his name? His name is in the scriptures over 7,000 times approximately. Uh, in the, we know for sure from the uh, book of uh, Bereshit or, or Genesis from the, to the book of Malachi in, in, in what referred to as the Tanakh or the Old Testament that his name appears 6,823 times. But in our English translations, it's been hidden with the English word Lord, where you see the word capitalized in your uh, English translations. You'll, that you'll, if you do the research, look it up, you'll find out that the Creator's name is what should be there. And it's been edited out of our English translations because in the original text, uh, the Hebrew name of our Creator, which we're going to talk about, is in the text. Um, and also in the New Testament, it's it's in there approximately 200 times. It's a little bit harder to find it find it uh, uh, in the New New Testament or the Brit Hadashah. It's because that uh, the Greek word that they use for Lord uh, is uh, Kuros, and they use that for uh, for the for the name of the Creator. But they also used it for um, just the meaning of the word uh, Master or Lord or that we or that they use as a title to greet someone so that Greek word kuros has been used for both and so that's why it's a little harder to to uh, detect in the in the New Testament the Brit Hadashah but it's there and you can really find out when because most of the the New Testament or the Brit Hadashah is is uh, is always refers back to the Tanakh or the Old Testament and um, you're able to see uh, where when it says as it is written, then it's always referring back to what was written before. And then if you look it up in the uh, in your concordance, you'll see that the word Lord there does replace the name of the Creator. So we know it should show up in the uh, in the New Testament as well. But again, it's a little harder to detect simply because the same Greek word is used for just the term Lord in, in, in every instance, which is not which is really a, a breaking of the third commandment to take the name of Yahuwah in vain or that means to falsify you know that's what the third commandment uh, declares is that we're not to take the name of our creator in vain now that word vain you know most people think that that means that we shouldn't use the creator's name as a curse word and um, well that's true but that's really not what that's saying there because the word vain translated for, into he from Hebrew actually means desolate, to make it desolate, make it, uh, you know, to, to ruin the name, to actually uh, to have no value to it. It also, that word vain means to falsify. And that's exactly what our English translation has done, is to falsify the name of the Creator as Lord, and that's not His name. So they're breaking the third commandment in, in that respect. Now this is all done because of a of Jew, Jewish tradition that started back even before the Messiah or the Mashiach came. They had started to, the scribes and the Pharisees, uh, uh, started to change, to uh, to hide the name uh, of the Creator because they did, they thought it was blaspheme or they, made, they actually made it a commandment that no one could speak the name of the Creator because they considered it blaspheme to speak the name of the Creator. Now this is all tradition. This is not in the Tanakh. It's not in, in the Old Testament that we're not to pronounce the name of the Creator. In fact, what I've already stated is that we are to proclaim His name. Yahuwah declared that we're to uh, make His name known. 
And uh, how can you make his name known if you don't know how to pronounce it or you don't use it? So, with that said, even today, the Greek Orthodox, I mean, not the Greek Orthodox, the uh, Hebrew, um, the Hebrew speaking people or the, uh, um, the, the, the people who, the, the, what am I trying to think of? Anyway, the, the Hebrew people today won't speak his name. They use the word Hashem, which is the English, which in our English terms would mean the name. And uh, so they don't even use that, or they use the word Adonai, which is our English word for Lord. So they, they still follow that tradition in, the, uh, in, in their, their philosophy or their, their way of thinking, and which is wrong. And, um, but um, I want to talk today about the, the name again and show you the letters. This is the modern Hebrew letters, and this is the ancient Paleo-Hebrew. This is actually the script here that you would see uh, in the Dead Sea Scrolls as far as the way the Creator's name is written. This is also, uh, I believe, the script that uh, Yahuwah used. If you remember um, on Mount Sinai, Yahuwah gave the Ten Commandments to, to Masha or Moses, and he wrote his name, and this is actually, I believe, the signature of Yahuwah himself, the way he wrote his name in the Hebrew letters. Keep in mind now, Hebrew reads from uh, right to left, as, as opposite of what English does, and uh, so from beginning here on the on the left or actually I'm sorry it'd be your right to left is the way that the Hebrew is is read uh, instead of left to right as English is written so anyway with that said these letters spell or pronounce are we use to pronounce the name of the Creator now how do we know how these letters are pronounced well we're going to show you how they're pronounced um, first of all let's just talk about uh, the word, this word here, which everyone is familiar with, halal, hala, it's halal, but it's halal, uya, is the way this word, uh, and we say it in English, hallelujah, but it's it's halal, uya, is how you would pronounce this word more accurately in Hebrew. Um, now, the, the word itself, most people are not even aware of what this word means. It means praise yah. You see here, the word, the halal is, is eight, spelled with the letter ha or hey in modern Hebrew, the two uh, these are two uh, what we refer to as l to this lamad uh, two letters here in Hebrew, and the last letter here is the uah which has the halal u and the two letters here ya the ya yad and the hey would give you the pronunciation of ya. Now in our English translations, I think it's written as hallelujah j a h. But we know everyone pronounces it hallelujah or hallelujah, not hallelujah, ja. That's not how we pronounce it. Now, so the ya part is the first two letters of the Creator's name. We get this from the word hallelujah. We know that's how you would pronounce the Creator's first two letters in His name. Now, again, modern Hebrew will change this to ye and. Uh, you have to understand that modern Hebrew uses vowel points to change the pronunciation of different Hebrew names and words, and that was done to hide and prevent people from speaking the name of the Creator. And so, with that said, we don't we don't want to use modern Hebrew as far as using vowel points to try to, to arrive to the understanding of how to pronounce the Creator's name. We need to go back and and uh, you not use vowel points and understand that these letters were pronounced a certain way. There was a standard way to pronounce these letters. And um, so we're going to talk more about this in our next session. I just want to sort of introduce this part to you. And uh, we're going to go into quite more detail about this. And uh, thank you for joining us this morning. And uh, look forward to our next session that we can uh, bring forth. And I want you to have a blessed, prosperous day in Yahuwah. And I love you. And Yahuwah loves you. And we'll be back uh, next time shortly. Shalom.